guys, I'm Sriman. In this video, I'm going to cover free body diagrams, which is an important part of physics. Many people don't know how to draw it. So in this video, for you guys, what you can expect is that I will give you a very important strategy that you can use during your exams. Okay? I'll bring you through a couple of example questions to show you how this strategy can be applied to exams. All right? So let me tell you what the strategy is. Okay? Number one is to define the system. What do I mean by define the system? So it seems that you are sitting down on a computer watching this video or like me, I am just standing. I have my weight going downwards, correct? And I have the normal reaction force by the floor on me. So since these two forces cancel each other out and of equal magnitude, the resultant force is zero. So do you expect me to sink and reach like the house right under me? No. Do you expect me to fly like a rocket upwards? No, because I am in equilibrium, vertical equilibrium. So define the system, not just define, define the system wisely. Number two is to draw the forces. Okay, this one I think is very simple. So gravitational force, the weight, the normal reaction force, the tension, for example. And number three is F net equals to MA. Where do you guys hear this? Newton's second law, correct? So I will explain how you can apply it through a couple of example questions for you guys. Right here I have question number one. Express the force between A and B in terms of F. So we have a force F that's acting on this A and B. As you can see in the diagram for yourself. How do you approach this question? First, define the system. So now, what do I mean by system? You can treat A as a system. And consider the forces acting on A. Okay, consider B or A and B as a whole. But you have to choose the systems wisely. So it makes your calculations very simple. So first let's define the entire object as a system with its own mass, total mass of 4M. So if we look at the forces that's acting on the entire AB system, we have the force F only. So this is so simple. You have chosen the right system. So F is equals to 4MA. This one you express it as A is F over 4M. Very simple guys. Now do this thing for bodies A and B on your own self. Do it on a piece of paper. Now for body A guys, draw the free body diagram. If A is the system, we have a force F. Correct guys? And now B exerts a force on A because it you're pushing against B and B will naturally like resist it. So this is F B A. Note the direction guys from B to A, okay, B A, not A B. So that's all right. We don't care about the vertical forces like mass and normal reaction. They cancel out each other because these two objects are in vertical equilibrium. So F minus F B A is equals to M A. Now let's look at the case for body B, okay. For body B, it has only the force A B. Now the question is, are these action reaction pair of forces? And what I'm asking you is FBA equals to FAB in terms of the magnitude only? Yes, right? Why? For action reaction pair of forces, there are four conditions that we must remember and you must state when a question comes out in the Cambridge exam. Number one, they must be of the same type. In this case, they are the same type, right? They're just contact forces. Number two, same magnitude. Number three, opposite directions. Number four, opposite bodies. These are very important. Dale Cambridge will love to test these four conditions. Easy marks. So, these act on opposite bodies, opposite directions, same magnitude. They are the same type. So, eventually, they are just the same magnitude. So, right, FAB is equals to what? FAB is equals to 3MA. The acceleration is same as the acceleration that we figured it out right here. Because if you consider it as a whole system or just A and B individually, they are moving, they have equal acceleration. They have the same acceleration. Substitute this in. We get 0.75F. And then that's your answer. So, here I have question 2. This question is a bit more challenging, but I will help you go through using the same strategy that I highlighted. 
very important thing that I highlighted in a previous video on kinematics as well as measurement. Do label as you go. So force that exists on the four of the create is 300 newtons. Let's just call this force F. Okay. The masses of the painter and create are this is M P. We call this M C, which is create. Calculate the acceleration, we label it A. It's very useful because you can just apply it in your own simultaneous equations, for example. First step, what did I say? Define the system. There are many systems that you can take note of. For example, the string. The string itself is a system. The string experiences a tension or force while a man. But I don't think that is a wise system because it doesn't help you do much things. So we consider the man as a system. What is the forces that's acting on this man? His own weight. Mass of the painter times G. Now, look at this. The force they excess on the floor of the plate is 300 newtons. Does this remind you of action, reaction, pair of forces? Action, reaction, pair. So if you exert 300 newton force downwards on the crate, the crate will exert a 300 newton force upwards. Correct? Now what else are the remaining forces? It pulls. So it experiences a tensional force. So we label this as T. Because if he pulls, he get experience a tensional force pulling him upwards, right? So what's the third step? After you've drawn the forces, now let's write the equation. T plus 3 Heiner minus mpg is equals to mpa. We label this as the first equation. Now, what else can you consider as a system? Because now you have a tensional force and you don't know the magnitude. So if you want to cancel out the tensional force, you need two equations. So we have to define the second system. Let us think, let us think. If you define the system of the grid that includes the man, it's extremely complicated system. You have like the crate experiencing a tensional force, the man itself experiencing a tensional force. There's too many forces and it, it's not a wise system to choose. So let's get that out. Instead, you can, guys can choose another system, which is just the crate. Okay, just the crate. Now, on the crate, what are the forces that a crate experiences? Let's try it out. First, it experiences a tensional force, right? Which causes attached to the pulley, a tensional force. Now it has its own mass, which we will call it MCG, and the last force is F, which goes downwards, which is 300 newtons. So we draw, third step is to write out the equation for the crate. So this is the painter, for the crate, it is T minus MCG minus 300 is equals to MCA. Please note that both the crate and the man are going upwards. So the upward minus the downward forces, not the other way around. So this is equation 2. Now guys, can you cancel out the tensional force? How do you guys do it? It's just math, right? So if you guys take 2 minus 1, you guys will get MPG minus MCG plus 2 300 is equals to MCA minus MPA. Am I right? You guys know this, this, this. You guys know this and this. Can you calculate the acceleration? Easy, simple math. And the answer you'll get is 2.2 meters per second square. Okay. Now the last and final question. Okay. This one is an inclined slope question. Very popular in A-level papers. Please revise this question. Now you're given a pulley system. The direction of acceleration of the system is this way. So this thing goes down. You ignore all frictional forces. These are the values of the masses. They ask you to calculate two things, the acceleration and the tension. Let's label it as A and T. Alright? What is the first step? Recall the first step? Define the system. So first, we can define M2 as a system. And we consider all the forces acting on M2. It's a pretty okay system, right? It's a pretty wise system. So for M2, right, what are the forces acting on it? We have its weight, M2G. What else do you have? The tension in the string. That's it, right? So, now we write the equation. M2G minus T is equals to M2A. Done. Now that you're done with that, they ask you to calculate acceleration and tension. If you need to calculate two things, you need two equations, simultaneous equations. So, 
let's define the second system as M1. Alright, very simple. So, if you look at M1, what are the forces that are acting on M1? It is inclined. Okay, so this is a bit harder to explain. It is inclined. Weight always act downwards. It's a, always a downward force. Normal contact force, right? Never forget normal contact force. Now, very important fact is that this angle 30 degrees. What does this affect the question? Do note that in the video of measurement that I highlighted, vectors can be resolved. And they can be resolved not only in the xy direction, they can be resolved parallel to and perpendicular to the slope. And this is the part I'm going to explain why the component of the weight parallel to the slope is m1g sin theta. Okay? Now, let me show you. This angle here is 30. 30 degrees. You guys know that. Then why is this angle here also equal to 30 degrees? Let's take it step by step. Then this angle right here is 90 degrees. This angle is what? 30, 90. So 180 minus 30 minus 90 is 60 degrees. This is 60, this is 90. This gives you 30. Am I right? So if this is 30, this angle is 30 degrees, correct? So if you look at M1G downwards, this angle is 30 degrees. Now, this is parallel to the slope. This is the perpendicular component of M1G. So, to look at the parallel component, we take the sine, which is opposite over the uh, hypotenuse. It's opposite over the hypotenuse. So, this one is M1G sine 30 degrees. And there's also a tensional force. Please don't forget. So, write it again. T minus, because this is the right force, parallel to the slope, the component M1G is going left, so T minus M1G sin 30 degrees is equals to M1A. That's it, we got the two equations now. What is left is removing one of the variables. So let's remove tension. How can you do that? Just add 1 plus 2 together. Correct? Then what do we get? 1 plus 2, you remove tension. You get M2G minus M1G sine 30 degrees is equals to M1 plus M2 acceleration. You guys know this. You guys know this. You know this is half. You guys know this. Calculate acceleration. You will get 4.91 meters per second square. Do leave a gap right here. Many people forget this gap. Now, you know acceleration, very simple, just substitute in one equation, calculate tensional force, you will get 49 Newton. So, let's recall the strategy that I highlighted. First, define the system wisely. Next, on the system, draw out the forces that's acting on the system only. Okay? And then equate using Newton's second law, F net equals to MA. So, I hope this video helped you a lot through these example questions to give you the confidence to do well for forces, dynamics, problems during your exams. So if you guys appreciate this video, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell and leave a thumbs up. So I will feel motivated to make better content for you guys. Thank you. Please share it with your friends and I'll see you in the next video.